Hey, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to do a ding repair on an epoxy surfboard or stand-up paddleboard that is painted. It's a similar ding to the ding we have right here on this surfboard where the rail glass has been smashed, but we don't really have an indentation. So we just need to get in there and repair that area and, and get it back to looking good. And we'll show you how to do that in this video. So the first step is to assess the damage. In this case, I've got a utility knife blade and we're getting in there and taking a look and figuring out how bad this is. The fiberglass, uh, at least on the surface here, has been cracked and broken. So we need to replace that so that we have a watertight seal and we still have the same structural integrity in the board. I'm beginning to sand here, but I realize I need to do something before I do that. So step two is gonna to be to sand it down, but as part of that, we wanna mask off around that damaged area. By masking off, as we get in there with the rough grits of sandpaper to clean up that crack and get rid of the bad and damaged glass, that will prevent us from sanding into the board outside of that area and making the repair job a bigger job. So once we have that masked off, we're gonna start in there, typically with like a 60 or 80 grit sandpaper, and we're gonna sand out the bad area and feather it out so that it tapers down to the bottom of that groove. Uh, the tapering will give us some surface area to bond our fiberglass to, and it will allow us to shape that into an oval so that we've got a nice shape to cut our patches to. As we get down through that crack, and we wanna go a little taller than the crack, and then, like I said, we want kind of a V shape, so we're going to taper that in. Uh, as we get down on this particular board, we found that there was another layer of fiberglass below it that had not been broken. So we're going to stop there, and we're going to move on to step three, which is to cut our fiberglass patches to fill that hole. In this case, we want to go a little thicker than the border. We want the surface of our patches to be a little higher so we have some material to fare back into and get that to blend with the surface, existing surface of the board. So we're going to cut a patch that's a little bit bigger than our repair area and then concentrically patches that are an eighth to a quarter inch smaller as we go and step those down. Uh, we used four patches on this board and once those are cut, we move on to step four, which is to wet the patches out. So we've applied a little bit of epoxy resin to the surface of the board, and now we're using our brush to just wet that fiberglass out. You can notice here that the fiberglass will go clear as the epoxy saturates it. This is an epoxy board. We want to use an epoxy resin with it. So we've got our third and now our fourth patch on. To get those patches blended nicely and to hold them in the shape of the board, what we're doing here is we're putting a little piece of peel ply. That's kind of an optional thing, uh, but it does make the job easier. So we put that piece of peel ply on there. And once the resin's cured, we're moving on now to step five, which is to sand it out. So we remove the peel ply before we sand, and now we're gonna begin to fare that uh, repair area out. Notice we're using a 3M rubber sanding block. Uh, the reason we're using a sanding block is that'll allow us to hit the high areas and knock those down and not dip into the low areas. If we did this without a sanding block, you know, if we use just our hand and the sandpaper, uh, our fingers are gonna fall down into the lows and we're gonna sand the lows as well as the highs and we just don't get a, as fair an area and, and it doesn't work as well. Um, I like the 3M rubber blocks because we can change out the sandpaper pretty easily, go up or down a grit uh, either way and reuse the sheets and, and it, they just work really nice. But a wooden block uh, that you glue the sandpaper to or even hold it to would work as well. Um, and so what we've started with is like a 60 or 80 grit paper. We've roughed it out, we've got it down about the level of the masking tape. Uh, here I'm just kind of feathering the edge out right there and then once uh, we're down to level the tape we're going to remove the rest of the tape and you'll notice now at this point we are sanding into a bigger area around the ding. Uh, that's okay if we'd gotten into the board before we removed the tape with the rougher grits we would have to sand a much bigger area. So in this case it's going to keep it to an area that's maybe you know, 
six inches across, uh, probably under that. But if we'd gotten in with the rougher grits sooner on that paint job, we'd have to go with a much bigger blending area. After we've sanded it out to 220, the next step, which is step six, is to spray paint. And we're using just a, a white spray paint from the hardware store here. Uh, typically we end up applying about two to three coats. And if you have to, you can sand it with 220 between coats. The final thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna blend our spray painted area. The edges of that paint area are gonna have a little bit of texture and to knock that off, we're gonna color sand them. So step seven is the color sand and buff. We're using an ultra fine Scotch-Brite pad to wet sand it with. And then once we're done wet sanding that, we're gonna use some surfboard number two polish and our buffer and we're going to buff that gloss back up on that area and as you'll notice here at the very end uh, you can't hardly tell yeah actually you can't tell uh, where that ding repair was done at All right, so that's how you fix a rail ding on an epoxy board that's painted. That could be a stand-up paddle board or a surfboard. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, though, or comments, please leave them below or get a hold of us at fiberglassapply.com. Thank you.